My mum said she got stung by a wasp on her stomach as she went into labour and has always said that that makes sense with how I turned out. Who knows what it means, but I like to think of it as a good thing. From an early age, my dad used to kick the ball with me in the garden or down the park. He was a semi-pro player himself and a huge soccer fan. He soon grew tired of me picking the ball up all the time and explained to my mum I would never be a professional footballer. Maybe I'd grow up to be a basketballer. But my mum ignored him and persisted with me and eventually I started to get a little better. My brother Dan was born and soon after, by the time he was old enough to kick a ball, we would play together for hours and hours and this is where I began to get a lot better. He would always go in goal and I would shoot at him for hours on end. By now, I'm six years old and by the time I reached seven, I began playing for the school team. I was always calling out famous football stars like Ian Wright, Gary Lineker, Paul Gascoigne when I hit my shots and dreaming to be like them one day. I had a great school teacher at school, Mr Thomas, who was football crazy. And on Saturday mornings when we used to play, he would stop my mum afterwards and say to her that one day I'd be a professional footballer, that I had a talent that was very rare. That always felt nice and made me feel good. Before long, a local team came in for me and asked me to play for them in the upcoming under nine season. They were a good team and I'd been playing together for a full year. I was nervous the first time I went along, but I scored a hat trick in the first game and I finished that season with 63 goals. Nearly every night I went to bed, I dream of scoring a goal in the Premier League. I would visualize what it would feel like, sound like, the crowd chanting my name. This drove me on to constantly practice my skills. I'd do anything that I could to make me improve. Before the next season started, I was asked to come and play for Leicester City, my hometown club. I was ecstatic. I trained with Leicester City for a full year while still playing and scoring goals for Beaumont Town. And when I was old enough to be signed by Leicester exclusively, I had no hesitation. The next five or six years of my life after that were simple. My total focus was football, training at Leicester three times a week, game at the weekend, practice on my own or with my brother when I wasn't at Leicester, and go to school. School was difficult for me. I was quite bright, but I always saw it as a hindrance, so I didn't apply myself properly. I would get into trouble often for missing lessons, not doing my work, homework, etc and my excuse would always be the same. I don't even know why I'm here. All I want to do is play football. Looking back and in hindsight, I wish I did focus at school as well as football. It would have at least given me a basis to work from if I hadn't made it, or like in my case, injury. Now, by the time I hit 15, 16, was when I started to see what people meant when they spoke about sacrifice for professional athletes. A lot of my friends started going out, drinking, late night parties, girls, and who knows what else. This is when I look back now, and this was a definite crossroads in my life. If I'd have chosen the path that so many of my friends did at that point in my life, I feel confident in saying I would never have fulfilled my dreams of becoming a professional footballer. Instead, I chose early nights, early morning runs, more soccer practice, a clean living diet, no alcohol, no cigarettes, no gambling, no lads nights out, no dramas, and definitely no girls. It was 1997 and Leicester City asked me to sign as a full-time professional footballer. I could feel my dream of playing in the Premier League becoming a lot closer. I spent two years in the youth team, honing my skills, developing my game, and pushing toward my dream of making it as a pro. In 1999, I felt for the first time my, my career started to stall. I was in the reserves, my game was up and down, confidence was low, and I felt miles away from the current first team squad. And then a guy called Gary Parker took over the reserve team 
and I suddenly realised how quick things could change in football. Within weeks I was back to my best and lots of fans, media and coaches at the club began calling for me to be given a chance in the first team. Peter Taylor was the manager at the time and Leicester were not doing well. It seemed common sense to me that if the first team wasn't doing well and a kid in the reserves is flying, give him a chance. But with luck, and you need a little luck sometimes in your journey to becoming a professional footballer, Peter Taylor was sacked 